let's paint these beautiful and easy to create summer landscapes step by step. I'll show you exactly what I'm doing and it's perfect for every beginner. Okay, so first things first, let's add a few outlines so we know exactly where to place everything in our painting and we don't get lost. And the first step to that is deciding how much space we want to give to whatever we're painting. So I usually use the rule of third to really decide how much space I want to give for the sky, for example, or the field or the sand, the beach, whatever I'm painting. And in this case, I just divide according to what I'm painting here. For example, here I divide it into thirds, so into three sections, if, if, uh, roughly evenly. And here, for example, one third will be the beach and two third will be my sky. So the sky will be more important here because I give it a little bit more space here as well. But here I give more space to the sand and the beach. So I give it two thirds. So the first thing you would need to do is also, I mean, you can switch things around, but for the first painting, I add my horizon line where I have my one third of the paper. The same here, so it's kind of even. And here it's two thirds is the beach. So I will have my, you know, my beach outline somewhere here. And then we can add some outlines for the water. Now I have a few outlines here, so I myself don't get lost what I actually wanted to paint. So here we just want to add a few rough outlines for the, for the water, just really like really, really rough. So squ squirrely lines, so we know where our water ends, where we want to add our waves and ripples and all the details just a few lines we don't want to add any uh, you know shading or details just rough outlines and then for the trees also just so we know where exactly we are placing them again no details just rough you know outline where we are placing it so just a small strip of swirly lines very rough and so we know where it is and here the same I add a few outlines just so I know where to place my trees without going into all the details. The same for the water, I'm placing it a little bit, like just a small strip here. Just starting at somewhere at the, actually here, this would be the water. This is still, this is still the beach. So we have the horizon line and then the water is somewhere here in this little corner. So it's, we have still lots of space here for the sand because mostly it's the sand and also mostly the sky. And here it's the other way around. Now we have more sand area. So we have a little, you know, a little sand area right here or the water, I mean, and the trees will go here. So again, this is just a very rough, even can be very loose. You don't, might not even have to place them here just a very loose outline for where the trees will be. Okay, and if you want to place people inside in your painting as well, just keep it very simple. Focus on a tiny dot for the head. And remember, usually if it's a very straight beach, for example, a flat area, so no, no hills, anything like that, all the heads are usually in one line, except if a person that stands next to a person is smaller, all the heads that are in one line. Even if the person is standing here somewhere far away, the head is still on this one line. And for the body, I also keep it like very simple, just almost like a square shape. And then I'll have carrots. I always call them carrot people because I keep them very simple. So dot and then a uh, roughly squared body and then the connect the feet or I mean the legs and the head here as well and again you can skip it if you are worried about drawing people because we already have enough detail with just our painting in general and here I will have just a few 
smaller people that are also just shaped as carrots. Okay, now that we have our outlines, we can start painting. Now, the first step is I'll usually start with the bigger areas first and then finish off with smaller details. Now, for the first painting, I'll create a rough a gradient from dark blue to light blue and the same here, a same here. And so we can just do everything one by one and let it dry. Now for the sky, I will be using a mix of cobalt blue light. So some mid blue color that you might have. I use cobalt blue light because I use cobalt blue light because it's such a nice mid color. So it's not too, you know, too purplish or green, but I add a little bit of cerulean blue hue to the mix. So it's because I'm never like 100% satisfied with one specific blue. I sometimes have to mix them so I'm happy with how it looks. It's also important to swatch your colors so you're actually happy with how it turns out later. Maybe a little bit more cobalt blue. And it will be light so yeah, I think that's good. And now you can just blend it out. Mm, or maybe actually add a little bit of ultramarine too, just a little bit. I, yeah, I mix like three different blues just so I can find something I like here. Okay, yeah, I think something are in these areas because sometimes if the sky is just too dark or too, too red, I feel like sometimes it just looks off in the end, but it depends on what you prefer also. Okay, and to start out with, I will use a bigger brush and just apply some clean water to the sky area. Right here, just so I, when I, until I meet, um, until I meet the horizon line. So where the beach starts, I'll stop and then just apply the water evenly. So make sure there are no puddles or anything like that. Then I'll go in and start at the top. And so just distributing the paint downwards from left to right, left to right, left to right. And continue. So it's a nice gradient color. I might need to go back because I know it will dry very pale. So I need more color. Again on the top. If you want to add some clouds, you can do that. The easy way to do that instead of, I know you can use a tissue paper and lift it off, but it will create hard, harder lines. What you can do is use a little bit of water also and lift it off a little bit with your brush. So instead of actually using your tissue paper, you can use your brush to lift it off a little bit. But the brush shouldn't be too dry, otherwise it, you also create patchy results. Here on the bottom, maybe we can add a little bit of whiter clouds, just so we have a little variety. Just dabbing on my paper towel. Yeah, that's good enough. Because I, 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 my tendency would be now to go in and, you know, fix things and just make everything worse. To, uh, to the clouds, so I just keep it the way it is. Here I'm just removing some excess paint and water on the edges so they don't disturb my painting. While this is drying, we can move on to the second painting. And here again, I will first, I need to remove some pencil lines so it's not, it doesn't get too dirty later here. And the same. It also helps to put some tape or something beneath your block or drawing board, whatever you're using, something. So it's everything moves downwards. And then the same thing, I will add some water first. Okay, make sure it's not too much, otherwise it will just it will over flood everything. And 
here that dries a little too harsh. Okay. And the same thing here, maybe add a little variety to the sky. So instead of a green wash, maybe let's make something more crazy, a little, you know, some looser sky and the white will be our clouds. Still darker on the top and lighter on the bottom. So just apply some paint to the top and just swiggle your way downwards. While keeping a little bit of, you know, some lighter areas here and there. So we kind of, um, you know, suggest that, that there are clouds, some white clouds. With more paint so we don't so it's not too light and also I always use my tissue paper here on the right so I make sure I control the amount of water on my brush if you want you can also lift some off again It's just again, if you use tissue paper right away on top, you will create harder edges and then it will just dry with hard edges. And I don't want that. Okay, I think that's good enough. And here on top, we can just use a little bit of water straight like that. And we don't have to create a puddle first. So I'm just distributing the water downwards that so it's relatively flat okay so now we have the base we have prepared our sky area and now while this is drying we can start mixing our colors for the beach and the water and make sure everything is relatively similar because the problem usually is that you know, when you paint and you randomly use different colors that don't, you know, fit together, everything will just look all over the place. So you always want to start with some basic colors and mix them together and know exactly what you can create with them. So then when you create your paintings, you know, which colors to mix in instead of just, you know, using a premixed color that might not fit anywhere. So let's start with the water here. Now, again, you can make it as tropical as you want. I want to make it a little bit more subtle, a little more calm. So usually like a you know, lake color. So it's not a super tropical turquoise color. So I will just use the blue color that I already have here. So my cobalt blue light with a little bit of cerulean blue hue, maybe a little bit of ultramarine. So some didn't even have to have all these three colors. If you have a starter set, you have usually ultramarine color or and a cool blue color like cerulean blue, Prussian blue, phthalo blue, something like that. If you don't know or if you're just starting out with watercolor painting, make sure to check out my guide to watercolor supplies. You can find the link in the description box below. But for now, you can just mix any blue color you already have for the base. And then you want to use a little bit of burnt umber. Burnt Amber is this nice brown color that makes our blue slightly more, you know, a little bit more muted, meaning it becomes a little more, you know, a little earthy, a little calmer. So this is what I want to use as you know, like this green blue in between, because I feel like this is a nice blue color for the beach uh, or like you know the water instead of a tropical green turquoise color but you can go for that as well and then so I think this is enough because there's not much to fill in but for the base color I also use again cobalt blue light or just ultramarine and a little bit of sodium blue hue with enough water so it's not too 
dark. I also add a little bit of this premix color right here, so it's, you know, so to calm it down a little. Yeah, I think that's good. So always watch your color, don't go straight into your painting, otherwise you will notice, oh, it's, it doesn't fit and then, you know, you panic. We don't want that. Okay, now for our water here on the left, I will start applying just the lighter colors first and leave out a little bit of the white for the ripples. So not the ripples, but for the foam in the water. And you can use the dry brush technique for that. So meaning you want to use a brush loaded with paint, but you always want to remove a little bit more, like a little bit of the water first. So then when you go over the paper, you can create these ripples, kind of like, like these lighter areas, because if you move it very fast and gently over your paper, the paper doesn't have enough time to capture, to get the pigment from your brush onto the paper and the brush doesn't have enough time to leave the paint behind. So do that very carefully. You can start maybe here. And there are some ripples here on, again, around this outline that we added earlier. So I just keep that free from any paint. And again, the, the water is, the, the these foamy lines are vertical or horizontal, I mean, and this is where we want to move our brush, so horizontally, and leave a little bit of these ripples here and there. You can also fill in some of the gaps. I need to use a little bit more water to lighten the color. Again, remove excess moisture. And then again, just very gently go over the paper because the, the color here on the water is a little lighter towards the back. So just, you know, don't overthink it. Just leave a little bit of white areas here and there. And then here on the bottom, we make it slightly lighter than that because now this is more like the darker version of the color. And then we add the lighter, but first I will add a little bit of the darker muted blue and just add it in between. So I still keep my little white areas in place and add a little bit of variety here in my water. Just again, just use my tip of the tip of my brush and just add these vertical, not vertical, horizontal, I always mess it up when I speak in between, I like that. So this will really make those white areas pop because if there's not enough contrast, it, it, they won't be as visible. So we have variety in our water. Also in the back, so it's not like a flat area. Something along these lines. And here on the front, we will use a little bit more water with the blue from the beginning and just carefully add it here in between. Be even lighter than that. So we need to make it lighter than the water that we have added here. And I still leave a little bit of the white area to create our ripples and the foam. Here I add a little bit of this greenish blue color to the left, just so there's variety and also it you know, it makes it a little bit darker and as, as if it reflects something here. Just very, very simple. Don't overthink, just focus all the different colors and play with them. Maybe hide a little bit of the white area so it's not like a, like a 
perfect even line but break them apart a little bit okay and the leftover color here we can use for this part right here and there's more white because I want to add the sun reflecting on the water so we all only see a little bit of this of the water here around the horizon and also here a little bit so again just a little dry brush So it looks a little like it sparkles, a little, maybe a little more darker paint here in the front. Alrighty, just dab it in. Maybe also add a little bit of olive green. Some did I mix with this blue and add it here along the horizon because we will add some of the trees there reflecting so I want to add a little bit of that here as if they're reflecting into the water. Now I think I already covered too much of the area so I'll keep it the way it is for now. And here on the right painting I'll add, I have more space here, so now I can focus more on this greenish color. And keep the rest, like, you know, just blend it in a little bit. Okay, and now we just need to add this, the sand. And for the sand, I will also mix some colors together to make it a little bit more interesting and make it a little bit more realistic so i will start with the base color you can use yellow ochre or if you have you can use raw sienna and i will add a little bit a little bit of a pink color to it, just a little bit so a little bit of Decadron Rose, for example, or any other pinkish color you have, just to make it slight, oops, slightly warmer. And I'll use that as the base. And I use also enough water in my mix, so it's not too thick and also not, you know, I don't want it to be too watery. And I'll add it here. And along the water that we just painted, with maybe a little bit more water, I will just blend it out to the side. And I think I add also a little bit of bur um, yeah, burnt umber, just a little bit to make it slightly more earthy because this is maybe a little too orange. And I focus more on this right corner on the bottom again with a little bit of water I blend it into the rest so I kind of keep the left side slightly lighter than the right I mean keep the left yeah keep the left side slightly lighter than the right and we can also sprinkle some paint on top I'll use a smaller brush, you can use a liner brush for example, so it doesn't sprinkle too much. And I use burnt umber for that and a little bit of water or the paint that you have in your mixing palette. I need to close whatever I'm not wanting to, you know, cover in paint, like so. And I'll just add my sprinkles can also use it from one to this so not instead of from top to bottom you can also kind of flick it to the side but I think it's easier just to do it straight like that just to add a little bit of texture to the sand and with the same color 
I'll, and maybe also a little bit of pink, a little bit. And blue, ultramarine. Just to make it slightly darker, I go in and outline this line in the water, so on the bottom. So if it's spread out too much, like here, I need to wait because otherwise it will just spread out like crazy. I don't want that. So we basically want to create the small shadow part or like the wet sand here underneath the water. Just a little bit, just some lines here and there. Break it off a little bit. can do the same here in our water that we already painted. So we add a little bit of shadows. So I'm adding a little bit of, it's more dark. Just dots here and there, just to add a little bit of shadow. And I add those dots into the white. A little bit. Again, don't overthink. And maybe also add a few lines into the water like that with, with this liner brush, just to add some more variety in the water. Again, you can add the shadows underneath the white area. So we added these, or like we left out those white spots. This is where we can create the shadow underneath by adding this darker brown. Okay, so we don't need too much, like we don't need to create a whole, you know, outlined, lined water. Here we can also add a little bit of detail in the water here. So if something is reflecting here, just using the dry brush almost. And while this is almost dry, we can go in and sprinkle a little bit more paint on top with dark blue or ultramarine and some brown. And again, sprinkle some more darker paint. So nothing watery, otherwise it will create blooms. We can also add some more on purpose like that so more horizontal so it's not just blooms that are going in all direction but make it more yeah we need to wait for it to dry now now it's spreading out too much so i'll wait a little bit but we can now already paint this here on the side the same way so the same colors raw sienna a little bit of pink and burnt umber. Can I keep a little bit of white in between the blue water and the scent? And I also make the bottom part slightly darker, maybe even here on this side. So just like loosely add the paint into the wet paint and let it blend together. And you can sp sprinkle some paint on top when this is slightly drier, otherwise it will spread out too much. And here on the right, we do the same thing. So I use raw sienna as the base, some burnt umber and some pink. And maybe I should clean my palette first to do that. Raw sienna, pink and burnt umber a little bit. And some more water, clean water. And I'm gonna start at the bottom and just blend my way up. Maybe a little bit more raw sienna. And 
And again, you can make the sand also a different color. It's just, it's fun to experiment with different variations. So whether with a little bit of pink or maybe a little bit more brown, depending on the time of the day. So it doesn't have to be just, you know, yellow. It doesn't have to be just brown. You can play around with variations. Maybe a little bit more burnt umber in there, just wet on wet, just very loosely, just to add some variety and texture. And then I'll just sprinkle some more paint on this painting that's in the center. So burnt umber and ultramarine. Maybe a little just brown. And I can do it also here now, this is slightly drier. You can also add a little bit more shadows here where we have our people, just a little shadow, maybe some detail in the sand on the along the horizon here and some more dots that are more horizontal so it's not just you know blooms in all directions and the same I do here on this side on the red painting Maybe just bigger dots, just so we have a little variety in the texture. So just horizontal lines, very loose. And then with very pigmented paint, we can add some more darker details, wet on wet, and they can still, you know, dis, you know, dissolve a little bit in this wet pa paper. Okay. I don't know why we have this weird stroke here. Maybe I moved my brush here for some reason, but it's there now. We add a little details here in the water with the dark paint. And some shadows in the water. And now we just need to add our trees and we're almost done. So for the trees, I will use a smaller brush for, for first and I will mix some green with ultramarine, some of these browns and olive green. So it's a bluish green. And I'll add it here to the horizon. Like that. And I will break it up a little bit with water because I don't want it to be like this huge dark line. I want to have some air in this area. So I'll use a little bit of water and just distribute the paint a little bit. Again, make it like wavy, nothing is even here except maybe the horizon line. 
and then we can dab in some darker paint to some areas and especially here on the left maybe in some of these bushes here maybe a little bit more blue it will help us to create a little bit you know dimensionality here instead of um, you know without trying too hard and you can also pull some of the paint up to create some trees so palm trees just using the tip of the brush and pull some of the colors to create some you know these thin lines so and maybe even add a little bit more blue so i have my ultramarine so i can make some areas darker I'm not using black or anything like that because it will make everything just flat and boring. Not necessarily boring, but it will make it also slightly more muddy. And if you use blue, because we already have some of the green here, it will just make the green slightly darker and cooler. And it will look like the sky is reflecting here a little bit. Well, not reflecting, but you know using the sky color you can also use a little bit of just lifting technique so you can lift off some paint just to create a little lighter area on the horizon disappearing to the right and i feel like i need to add a little bit of green here as well so maybe some of these leftover greens that i have here i'll add them here to this water so it looks like some of that reflects here or maybe there's some you know something on the left i don't know if my horizon line is so straight it looks like a little hill or something maybe i need to i don't know Maybe I'm just imagining things, but it looks a little like a hill, but I don't know. But you want to make the horizon line as straight as possible. You can also use some, you know, something to protect the paper. So use a thick paper. So if I place it here, for example, I could technically help myself create, but the because the paint is so watery, I just you know create a mess like that. So, but don't panic. Things fix things. If you have a flat brush, we can also. Soften the edges here a little bit so we don't have this hard line but it blends a little bit of with the background and with the water okay so the first painting for now can just dry and we can continue with the same step here again I use this green colors that I make so olive green some ultramarine and again I add it across the horizon can also add a little bit of raw sienna to it so we have variety because now we see it a little bit better oh actually it's just different different part of this painting again with some water we can soften some of these colors we can pull some colors up to create our palm trees Again, don't over don't overthink just a fun mixing those colors applying it maybe this tree is slightly taller and also we'll make it slightly dark because this is a little too too bright or too light rather too pale in the end so i'll bring in some dark blue or ultramarine 
end up the dark paint here across the horizon again because this is kind of like the shadow part in our painting just dab it on and i also pull the color up to my palm trees because they are a little too transparent so some are lighter some are darker it's a variety and here we can maybe connect this to the sand a little bit because if there's a huge white line i feel like this will be too distracting Just very loose and oh, oh it's just the people here so why, why is my painting moving down okay and the same thing here now we have it a little bit co closer i might need to use a bigger brush so again olive green and some of these colors that i already have here get more olive green again just using the horizon line as my guideline some dark blue or the ultramarine for darker paints or areas and then again you can pull up some of these palm trees just with the tip of the brush. And I, I, if you notice there are two, you know, it's two even, meaning they're just in one straight line, just break them apart a little bit. Because if they're just too evenly spaced out, the same size, the same height, they might look a little, you know, it won't be as realistic. Again, I'm using a little bit more of my ultramarine in my mix. And it's also olive green. Just dab it on. And I also use a little bit of raw sienna again. A little bit and first I need to soak up this color over too much here so with my raw sienna i want to create a little lighter line here and because my green moved downwards it will connect a little bit so i'm lifting it off also a little bit with my dry brush Another fun thing is you can use a little bit of water and sprinkle on top of this green and it will create a little texture so it opens up the pigments a little bit and it looks like it breathes a little bit. So play around, don't worry about it, just, you know, have fun. Here I'll add another... Rossi on the line here. So yeah, we moved a little bit the tree a little too down, but that's okay. If it moves too much, you can always use a tissue paper and lift some of the pigments. But I think it looks good because it's not super perfect and it helps us to make everything connect make this slightly darker okay and now we just need to add some of the details so the people i use again my liner brush and I 
the mostly dark paint, so dark blue or ultramarine. Just a little like silhouettes. And this needs to dry. I will use a hair dryer and then we can add our people there. Okay, now we can add our silhouettes. Again, tiny hat relatively so not a huge head compared to the body otherwise it will look off again it's just a you know we're not going for perfection here we just want to create this sketch capturing that there are people walking here Somehow it looks like the sky is about to fall on the side. But you can let me I can fix it still. So looks like it's yeah, it's like almost falling to the right. I'm scrubbing off the pigments right with my paper towel. The arms shouldn't be transparent, so I'm adding more pigment. And that's pretty much it. So I think I will also add more darker sprinkles now that everything is dry. So with brown and some blue and some water. Like that. Here we have, I think, enough. Another thing you can add is some white gouache or if you have liquid opaque watercolor, you can also use that and just sprinkle some white here and there just to make it sparkle. can also add a little bit of highlights to the trees or something like that. something maybe um, like a tree is reflecting some of the light so you can add some white ref reflections add details something like that you can add some if the head of the person for example you know disappears with the background you can add a little like white dot on top of the head so it will Move it a little bit away from the background. And if you lost some of the white for the ripples and the foam, you can also go in and add some more on top. Like it's not a crime to use some white. It's totally up to you. It's just someone to maybe over use it otherwise you'll just turn into a gouache painting in the end okay i 
the only problem I have is with this wave here. I think I'll add a little bit more white to this wave just to connect it a little bit to the side. And that's pretty much, I think that's it, right? So let me remove the tape and we'll see what we have. Now, if you're just getting started with watercolor painting, make sure to check out my guide to watercolor supply so you can set yourself up for success. And I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I mean, there are some of the things that I might need to tweak because now the paint moved and stuff like that. You can always do that, so don't worry. You always, typically you need some break from the painting and then come back with fresh eyes so you can see what needs to be tweaked. No, tw tweaked. <laughs> And yeah, I really hope you enjoyed painting it. A very quick and fun painting. So I can't wait to see what you create. So share, please make sure to share your paintings with me. And have a wonderful day. And I can't wait to see what you create. Take care.